Here, a second type of vaccine is being made. Pneumococci, the germs that cause lobar pneumonia, are being used. For this vaccine, dead germs are needed because there is no weakened form of pneumococci as there is of smallpox virus. The live germs are killed with chemicals or with heat, as in this case. Now let's see how this vaccine, made from dead germs, works when injected into a live animal. The effect would be the same in a human patient. In the rabbit's bloodstream, the dead germs, shown as pairs of ovals, stimulate the formation of antibodies. As additional injections are given, more and more antibodies form and combine with the germs, which are then removed by the white cells. This rabbit has now developed active immunity to pneumococcus infections. Now let's take a sample of this blood. The antibodies in the blood of this immune rabbit will attack pneumococci germs wherever they encounter them. After standing a few hours, the blood clot and the serum containing the antibodies separate. When a few drops of this serum are added to a culture of pneumococci, the antibodies come in contact with the germs. Clumps of germs and antibodies settle to the bottom. This is called agglutination. Now let's see how the same serum acts in the case of a rabbit already stricken with a pneumococcus infection. First, the serum is injected into the rabbit's bloodstream. Soon, the antibodies in the acquired serum begin helping the white cells dispose of the germs. In about two days, the rabbit recovers. He has passive immunity. Passive because he did not develop his own antibodies, but acquired them from the serum of another rabbit.